let's get started. Uh, my name is Coach Hockey. Some of you may not know me. I've worked with Stu before. I worked with Danny before. I was actually the head strength coach with tennis a few years back. Right now, I, I specifically just work with football. Um, that's my number one passion, uh, working with football. Growing up as a young kid from New Orleans, Louisiana, I fell in love with football. And it's always been my number one passion. But that led me to another passion, which is coaching and helping people, helping influence people, helping people come together and achieve great things. Uh, I'm a great competitor, just like yourselves. I hate to lose. I'm sure you all have that same attribute. And uh, I think that's the whole vision for this, that we're going to come together, sharpen each other's minds and help each other find ways to be successful, whether it be on the court or off the court. Because I believe at the end of the day, all these things tie together. You know, I gave y'all all a notepad. I want y'all to, anything that comes that I say that's worthwhile, that might be able to help you in your journey, write it down, okay? If you have a question, write it down. I might not be able to answer it right away. You may forget it when I do open up the floor. Now you have it written down, you haven't forgotten it. Makes sense? But that's just a resource that I want you to have. We're going to do this every couple of weeks, I believe. So I want you to have your notes to be able to always return to them. Because the truth is, you know, y'all have picked a journey that's a little bit tougher than the average person. You know, the average college student doesn't go through the things that you go through on a daily basis. With that being said, you chose to be here. You're committed to be here. You're committed to play tennis and chase after something special. But with that, that chase, obviously, you're not able to do some of the things that the average student does on a daily basis. You can't go home and take a nap after school. You come in here and put in two to three hours in the heat. But like I said, what's it worth you want to go and hang out on the couch? You chose this for a good reason. You're trying to do something special. And be, being special doesn't end when you're done playing tennis. That's for the rest of your life. And that's what we're going to talk about in here, okay? So anything that I say that might be able to help you on your journey, write it down, keep it. So you know when you do come here from after class and you got to go get out of the heat, maybe there's something I said or something that came to your mind that you can look at and kind of remind yourself. You know, the first, about five years ago, hated reading books, hated it. Was never, you know, a straight A student, A, B's, probably too many C's to be perfectly honest with you. I'm sure most of y'all are A and B students. But to be perfectly honest with you, never, you know, did great in school. Uh, probably should have took my competitive edge more to the classroom than I did. And, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I didn't. That's one note that y'all need to do. Take your competitive edge to everything. Pretend like everything's a, uh, a court. Not just when you get on the court. But when you get in the classroom, the classroom's a court. You know, when you get home, the home's a court. Everything, attack, attack everything the same mind, the same attitude. If you can do that, you can be so much better in your relationships and in your life outside the court. Everything's the court. Attack with the same attitude. Attack with the same mindset. So I never liked reading. And, and probably because, you know, reading was something that was a sign. You know, a teacher wants me to read this book, that book. I don't want to read any of this stuff. This is junk, right? I know better. It's so funny when we're younger, we know everything. As we get older, we realize we know nothing. But about five years ago, I picked up a book by Tony Dungy called Uncommon. And it was basically about men being either a common, an average person, or an uncommon man, something special. And it was all about you know his story and becoming an uncommon man. Just a little background. He was the first... Uh, African-American first black guy to win a uh, Super Bowl as a head coach in the NFL. You know, very successful. The crazy story about him and his, his style of coaching is much different from mine is he's never screamed or raised his voice once. And I just, I think it's awesome that a uh, head football coach or even a head coach uh, has had the success he's had without even raising his voice. Uh, obviously, when he speaks, people listen. He's got something important to say, and I think his track record proves that. But to get back to my point on reading, after I read that book, I developed a new passion for reading. I realized that, you know, the wisdom of the world can be found in books. But if you ask the average person, they say, I don't have time to read. With most of y'all, y'all are forced to read books within school. This is something that, you know, y'all can start to develop. But even more so when y'all graduate, I think starting to pick up books and, and learning that wisdom of the world. Because it's so funny to me, it's like, wait, so... 
I can find the wisdom of the world in books, but I don't have time to read. How does that make any sense? You know, if I can work more on myself, I can have anything I want, but people don't have the time to work on their self. How does that make any sense? You see what I'm saying? So you can make a wage by working on your job, but you can make a fortune by working on yourself. I want you to write that down. I can make a wage by working on my job, but I can make a fortune by working on myself. So every day you can come work and hit a million balls, and you can make a profession out of it. But if you spend all day working on yourself, you can have whatever you want. You can make a fortune. You define that fortune. Working on yourself doesn't end from the, seven, the second you wake up to the second you go to sleep. Working on your job, that only takes place when you step on that court. So I want us to take a different mindset to life from now on. Instead of just getting better on that court, we're going to get better from the second we wake up to the second we go to sleep so that we can get that fortune. It's a bigger picture than just tennis. It's life, becoming great at life. And everything ties together. Everything works for our benefit. So one of the books I picked up was called Hard Optimism, and it's all about having the right attitude, having the positive attitude, having the positive mindset. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. But the, one of the quotes in the book that struck me most was that the average person has 40,000 thoughts per day. And I was like, this can't be true. I, I Google searched 40,000 thoughts per day. And, you know, to my surprise, it was true. 40,000 thoughts per day. Unbelievable. How crazy is our mind that it's running all day? 40,000 thoughts per day. You can start to think yourself, you know what? That is true. I'm thinking all day. And the thing we don't realize is that our thoughts fuel everything we do. Our thoughts fuel our actions. Our thoughts fuel our results. Today, during that run, you were thinking that whole run. What were you thinking about? Were you saying things like, man, it's hot. Man, I'm tired. Man, we're not going to win. Man, we're not going to finish on time. Or are you saying, we got this. There's no team like this one. I love pain. I can't be stopped. Only you know what you were thinking about. But what you were thinking about fueled your actions and fueled your results. So now that we are aware of our thoughts, fueling our actions, fueling our results, now we can be better goalkeepers. Now we can be better at defending the net, let's say, right? The thought comes in, I have a choice. I'm either going to throw it away or I'm going to use it to my benefit. So when we do this Indian run next time, let's start paying attention to our thoughts. What am I saying in my head? Is it something that's going to help me or defeat me? I have a, I, I'm just going to guess if you struggled today, you were probably talking really bad to yourself. Real bad to yourself, huh? Yeah, it was. Why do we do that to ourselves? It's so funny though, right? Same day, same run, says he usually crushes it. But today, since we're doing something different, now you're going to start talking bad to yourself. And it's not just you, it's me. I work out today, I'm like, eight sets of eight. I'm going to crush it, squats. I'm going to finish with 255. I put 255 on the bar. I'm on my third rep. I'm getting down, getting up, and I'm like, tired. Where, why did my attitude change? Why did my thoughts change? And why did I allow them to change, right? If we want to use our thoughts to our advantage, if we want to let our thoughts fuel us so that we have the right action, so we have the right results, how do we do that? We become more aware of our thoughts and we do a better job of affecting one another. The focus of today is on unity. Y'all all, all have the Bama Creed, right? Y'all see what number one is? Read number one for me, Stu. We are a group of competitive individuals united as a team that make decisions for the good of the team. We act like a team and dress like a team for any function. Awesome. So unity is going to be the focus of today. So every time we, we, every time we meet, we're going to talk about one of these values, with today's focus being on unity. So we're going to figure out what unity is, we're going to break it down, and we're going to throw it around and make sure we know. Because I think the truth is, a lot of times... Things are put on our plate and we don't necessarily know what to do with them. So my job here is to empower you, okay? To give you everything, all the knowledge I have, to get all the knowledge y'all have so we can share it, come together, and use it for all of our benefits. So a lot of times you're given a leadership role. You're given a role on a team and you're like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this? So we're going to come together, share ideas, and make sure we make the most of this experience. Make sense? I've done this leadership development, this mental development with football before. Now I'm doing it with y'all. I want to do it with anybody that's willing to get better. And I think y'all are willing to get better. For me, what's worked 
for my entire life, three values. Vision, discipline, passion. you got to have a vision. What's your vision? Write down vision right now. Right now, you have to have a vision. And it's a small vision and it's a big vision. It's not just, I'm going to win a national championship this year. It's, I'm going to dominate today. It's not just, I'm going to be a great tennis player. I'm going to be a great man. Make sense? You've got to have a thousand visions, not one, a thousand. The more visions you have, the more goals you have, the more chances you have of accomplishing those goals, accomplishing those visions. Okay? That's what got me in front of you today, having a thousand, a million visions. Because the more visions you write down, you, the more you start checking off, the more you're able to write down, the more you're able to start checking off. Make sense? Second thing, discipline. I can't make something come true unless I'm willing to have discipline. The discipline to do the right things, the discipline to not do the wrong things. Make sense? Got to have discipline. Discipline is what's going to fuel our visions. It's what's going to fuel what we're trying to accomplish on a daily basis. You know what those disciplines are, all right? Look, the truth is we're all given a 24-hour game plan. How are you using it? They're, we're no different. There is not one other tennis team in the country that has 25 hours in a day. So why not us? Why not us? You, you mean to tell me that they have an advantage? That they have more talent? That they have more hunger? I say that's bullshit. We all have 24 hours a day. So let's come together. Let's figure out how to put together the best 24-hour game plan so that we get that vision. We make it a reality. Last thing I said. Anybody remember the last thing I said? Passion. Passion. That's that fire in your heart. When I worked with the tennis team, one of the people that impacted me the most, as a coach, one of the people that impacted me most was Danny. And you know him. And sometimes it's something that we want to laugh at and chuckle at because it makes us uncomfortable. But no one has fire in their belly like Danny. That's something that's rare, and that's something that we need to use and feed off of. Okay? The truth is, times are going to get tough. And at times, we need to be able to lift each other up. I think that's what's unique. That's what's special about college tennis. For like your whole life, you've been on your own playing this sport, right? Now you walk in the door and you're like, shoot, i got nine other guys now. How do I act with all these guys? I mean, what's their role in my life now? What's their role on my team now? How am I supposed to be a team player? I've always been by myself. So we're going to figure out how we're going to come together, how we're going to affect one another. And I think passion's a big thing. And I'm not telling you need to be that, okay? I want you to be you. But my thing is, when that, on that fourth lap, when things got tough, where was the juice? Was it there or was it not there? And that's on everybody here. Not just Stu, that's on everybody here. We all have an equal share. When we ante up, when we say all in, each person puts their coin in the middle, right? Stu don't put two coins in. Everybody puts their coin in, and we go to bat. We go to compete. When we show up on game day, he doesn't bring two rackets and play two different matches. Everybody has a match to play. Everybody ante's up if we're all in. Make sense? So, look, just because he's got the title doesn't mean you can't leave. Make sense? He's got the title because he's been here longer. He might have a better opportunity to leave, but that doesn't mean that you can't be a leader. If we just waited until someone told us to do something, we wouldn't be very successful. you got to go want it. you got to go take it on your own. Okay? Does that make sense? Vision. What's our vision this year? For ourselves, for our team. Discipline. What are the disciplines that we're going to do in order to make that vision a reality? What are the things we need to stay away from? I've heard of the 48-hour plan. All right? That's one thing. What else do we need to stay away from? Passion. Who's going to have more fire? I always use this analogy. If there was a video camera watching me right now, could you tell that I love what I do? If I videotaped you during practice, could I tell you love what you do? And I'm going to throw you under the bus right now, Stu, because you're the only guy I know. But last practice you had, you give 100%? Yep. 100%. Y'all all agree? Okay. You're the first person I've ever met that said they can give 100% last practice. So I appreciate that. Everybody else, are we giving 100%? That's something we got to check ourselves on. we got to evaluate ourselves on. Okay? 100% every time we step on that court. Make sense? 
If you're all in, if you're trying to make that vision a reality, I've got to give 100% every time I step on that court. What's the deal with the black shirt? So the person who earns it for the week. Right? Works their ass off every day. Right. So to me, we got to have 10 guys fighting for that black shirt. It should never be in the same guy's hand. It should be an all-out dog fight every day, every rep, every week for that black shirt. There's got to be a sense of pride. I gotta want that thing better than anybody in this room. I gotta want that thing more than anybody in this room. It's my shirt. They're gonna rename the black shirt my shirt. Does that make sense? That's the kind of attitude. That's the kind of mindset. Because the truth is, the only way you can get better at tennis is by working on it. It's not you're not gonna just wake up and be some great tennis player. Yeah, God's gifted you, you're blessed with a talent, but now you gotta go work on it and build that talent and take it to a whole nother level. So we're going to use a vision, we're going to use a discipline, we're going to use passion in order to make our dreams realities this year. Make sense? So let's talk about unity. Unity. I need, uh, what's your name? Corey. Corey, what's unity to you? I mean, just acting as a team at all times and working hard every day. Okay. What's your name? Andrew. Andrew, what's unity to you? Being together. What's unity to you? Uh, yeah, I think like just being like a strong group of individuals. Okay. And everyone like you can rely on the person behind you. Okay. Nate. Becker. Unity. Um, <clears throat> basically every individual coming together with like the same goals and aspects and coming one unit to want to succeed. Okay. So as we go through these values, and there's no right or wrong answer. As we go through these values, we got to have a good understanding of what these values mean in order to emulate these values, in order to use these values to help us make our visions realities. So unity, coming together, like I mentioned before, we've always been on our own in this game. Now we're a team. How do we use that to our advantage? Coming together. In order to be united, we have to have a common purpose. What's that purpose? Anyone? When? When? Real simple, right? When, when what? Win a national championship. Write down when. Write down when a national championship. What, up, what other purposes do we have, Stu? Uh, I mean, as far as I can go, I, mean, I want to I take myself as far as I can possibly go. Okay, so write that down. Win the black shirt this week. Anybody else got a common purpose for us? We can all become better people together. Yep. Write it down. Sam, you got something that's a common purpose? I'm trying to think. Uh, Danny, you got one? You, you want to take care of the things outside the court which will help you to be better on the court, aka school, social life, and time management, things you have to accomplish every day, you have to do them better, and that will help you to be better tennis player. No doubt. The habits we have formed throughout our entire life will show up on game day. The habits we form outside the tennis court will show up on game day. There's no doubt about it. There's something that pops up during a game. It's called instinct. Instinct are trained habits. So if you hit a ball a thousand times, that's what's going to show up on game day. Your instinct. Okay, so what, what kind of habits are we forming? Not just on the court, outside the court. Make sense? You gotta feel like you deserve that point. You gotta feel like you deserve that match. Any other common purposes? Just, you know, being a team, taking care of each other no matter what happens. And um, just on and off the, on off the court, in the weight room, in the classroom, just being, keeping each other accountable. So, in order for us to be united, we have to have a common purpose. I think we all agree we have a common purpose. The second way that we become united is that we fight for one another to make that purpose come a reality. And the only, the only way we're going to fight for one another is if we know one another. You've got to think about the people that are closest to you in your life. Your family, your brother, your sister, your mother, 
your father, your best friend, you'd do anything for them, right? You'd do anything for them. That's got to be the feeling in this room. That's the only way we're going to be champions. And the only way you're going to be able to fight for one another is that y'all know one another. What'd you say your name was again? Becker. Becker. Tell me five positive things you know about Sam. Um, uh, he's good at long distance running. Yeah. He, um, he's a good, good tennis player. He's a very positive person. <laughs> Lame. Looks better at the shaved head. And you don't know anything about him. That, that's, I, did, I need to know more. But um, and one more. Give me one more. Very smart. Very smart. <laughs> What's your name? Nico. Give me five positive things about Stu. He's a great leader. Cares about everyone on the team. He, uh, just like today, he pushed me when when someone's in the back or struggling. Um, just like that, he's always there for you, and he loves to compete on game day. Two more. Five positive things about him. He's a fighter. He'll back you up no matter what. Um, I think he, uh, he's a genuine guy. He cares a lot about the team. Two more. Um, he's fun as hell. One more. <laughs> Give a hand to everybody real quick. Hey, I'll put you in a kind of difficult position, but just a simple technique like that, you realize maybe we don't know each other good enough, you know? Maybe we do need to do a little more digging. Maybe we do need a little more searching. So we're going to do a little sum today called What's Your Why? Why do you do what you do? Okay? I'm going to share with you my why. When I was growing up, my parents, I come from a split home. My parents divorced when I was in the crib. When I was young, I listened to my mother and my father fight, cuss each other out. Fight the two people that are supposed to love one another who had me at each other's throat, cussing at each other, had me. Hated each other. And they always fought about money. That's the only thing they fought about. I needed $5 for a book at school, cussing each other out. The two people that are supposed to be my resemblance of love, fighting over money. From that day, I decided money will never be an issue in my life. I will influence as many people as I can to make sure money is never an issue so that one day, in hopes that I'm blessed with a family, they will never see that. Money will never be the priority, but it will never be a problem. Love's got to be the priority. Unity's got to be the priority. For us to be successful, unity's got to be the priority. we got to know each other's why. Why do you play this game? Why do you love this game? Why do you want to become better? There has to be a reason. When it's a tough day, just showing up isn't going to work. That's why there are so many average people. That's why there's only one champion. Because it's not easy. It's not easy to show up every day and be a Hall of Famer. You've got to have that vision. You've got to have that discipline. You've got to have that fire. When the other nine guys, you see it in their eyes. They don't have it today. i got to do something to make sure they've got it. And there's going to be plenty of days this year where you're going to look in everyone's eyes here and they are not going to want to bring it, whether it be a game, a practice, or just a run. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to allow it to happen? Are you going to bring something to the table to elevate this team? So the only way that we're going to fight for one another, the only way that we're going to attack this common purpose together, united, is if we know each other, if we know each other's why. Like I said, you fight for your family, you will fight for your best friend because you know who they are, and you're willing to do whatever for them. So I want all y'all to share your why. Still, you start off. 
Stand up, share your why. Um, my main why is probably I've always grown up around the tennis court. 
because my dad teaches tennis, and uh, he's obviously, for the people that know him, he's a competitor himself. So, um, just always when you win a close match, it's the best feeling. And, uh, yeah, just compet competing, it takes your mind off the, all the other things outside of life when you're on the court. So, that's probably me. My main why is getting absolutely everything I can out of myself. I've had it molded into me since I was a young kid of uh, never giving up, running after every, absolutely every ball, having the best attitude. And I, by the time I'm done with my college, I, I will, by the time we're done with that first match or that last match, I don't want to have anything left. That's my main goal. I'm, I'm leaving everything out there. And the thing that's just motivated me as I've gone along is I've had a lot of setbacks and I've done absolutely everything I can to get through it. It's never been easy, but um, something I've looked at 